Today we're building a voltage-controlled oscillator, which is the backbone of modular synthesis. The oscillator part means it makes a specific sound, and the voltage-controlled means that other modules can control the features about that sound, like frequency or timbre. Last time we made a stereo output module, but we didn't have any other modules to test if it actually worked or not, so today we're going to fix that. The design that I came up with has two inputs and one output, and probably most closely resembles a wavetable VCO, though the technical implementation differs. The inputs are frequency and wave shape, and the output is the resulting sound wave. The frequency will vary between 20 Hz and somewhere in the thousands, and the wave shape will vary between a square wave and a triangle wave. So our steps to accomplish this are 1. Get any sort of noise coming out of the circuit. 2. Get a noise of a specific frequency. 3. Change the frequency based on a knob. 4. Change the wave shape based on a knob. And 5. Bring everything together into a module. And our constraints are We're doing all of the processing digitally on an M4 ARM chip. I only have basic hand tools and simple parts. And this thing is about 10 times less expensive than just buying one, but hopefully only about 5 times worse. Let's get started. We can quickly connect up a jack to the A0 analog out pin of our microcontroller, and connect up the ground pin as well. Now with the easy part done, we need to write some code. Our first task in the code is just to make any noise come out of the jack, so I'm going to throw something together that makes a square wave. For 200 samples it writes 0, then for the next 200 it writes 65,000, which is the maximum and minimum values we can output. The obvious question now is, 200 samples of what? Which is a great question that I actually don't know the answer to. 200 just sounds right, and I might as well try it. And after messing up my cable connections for about 20 minutes, this is the sound that we get from the code. Yeah, no idea what that frequency is, but it sounds like a square wave if not a low quality one, which is good enough to keep going. So the correct thing to do here is set up a write buffer with a clock timer attached, uh, set it to 44,100 Hz, and pre-compute a wavetable load buffer with sample. I'm not going to do that. This chip is probably fast enough to do all that if you're writing in assembly or C, but I'm using Python, so I'm going to have to find a different way. So the plan that I have is just to throw samples at the digital analog converter as fast as I can. Then every once in a while we stop and figure out how fast we're going, and then just adjust everything. To make this process sound more official, I'm going to call it real-time synchronous processing. And to make it less official, I'm going to call it spew and adjust. So in practice, we have two main parts of our code now. The main loop figures out what value we're going to write next, then writes it. Then every once in a while we run through our recalibration sequence. How often we do that is defined by our samples per calibration variable. The recalibration sequence starts by figuring out how long it's been since we last calibrated, then divides that number by how many samples we've gone through in that same amount of time, to figure out our effective current sample rate, or samples per second. Ideally, this number will be above 40,000, but the overarching goal is above 10,000. Below 10,000 will start sounding more like a McDonald's toy than a musical instrument. The recalibration sequence can now compute how many samples should be in each wave, which is the frequency divided by the samples per second which is probably the part that makes the most sense out of this entire project. It only gets worse from here. To finish off this piece of code, we make a square wave by outputting 0 for the first half of the wave, and then the max value for the second half. Let's try it. This should be a 200 Hz tone, compared to the guitar, and 300 Hz. I'd call that a success. Our next problem to fix is that warbliness that you hear from the speaker. First, I thought it was because I'm using the same index for recalibration and for the wave output, so I'm going to split those two different indexes, but I don't think that actually changed anything. Next, I think it might be because the sample rate is bouncing around a bit too much because of the variance in the clock, so I switched the sample rate calculation to a moving average instead of just the direct value to smooth things out a bit more. Which does make this better, but there's still something else causing a problem. After a lot more digging and thinking, I figure out the actual issue, which is that our recalibration routine is getting in the way of our wave output and causing a shift in the wave index, because the index isn't moving, but time continues to move. We can naively correct for this by just manually advancing the wave index and the calibration sequence by a few samples. I tried a few different options, and 5 seems like it's the best. And there we go. Definitely good enough. And now let's bring out our knob. One side gets 3 volts, one side to ground, and the middle goes to A2 analog input, and we'll get a value between 0 and 3 volts, depending on knob position. Write up some quick code to test that. And as with the outputs, the input is between 0 and 65,000. 
Now that we have this knob, it's a pretty simple lift to map the values the knob outputs to our frequency range. Neat. Now it's the hard part I didn't really think too much about, but I hope it's not going to be that hard. So we have two different sides. One is a square wave where half the wave is zero and half the wave is max value. Then the triangle wave where half the wave slopes up from zero to max and the other half slopes down from max to zero. So the plan I came up with is a wave delta, which represents the slope of our wave, sloping up for the first half of the wave and down for the second. On one side the slope is equal to the max value, so it hits the bottom and top values in one sample, which is just the same as a square wave. On the other side, the wave delta is equal to the max value divided by the number of samples in half of our wave. So that in half our wave we can go from zero to max, and the other half back down from max to zero, which is a triangle wave. Using this method, most of the wave shapes close to a square wave are not particularly interesting, because the knob is linear and the wave shape is not. To fix this here, I square the input knob value as an easing function. But while I'm writing the script after the fact, I realized that I should have gone with a 1 minus 1 over x easing to match the wave shape function, so I'll go back and fix that later. But anyways, it works pretty well now. Okay, now that the heavy nerd stuff is out of the way, we can do some assembly. Here I mark out where to cut holes in the case and do some drilling. I continue to be not very good at drilling, but there are some minor improvements from last time. We have a knob and a jack both for the frequency and wave shape adjustment, and also an output jack. The input jacks for frequency and wave shape will stay unconnected for now, as I don't yet own any modules that can make use of them. That's for next time, I guess. For now, we'll just rely on the knobs. Okay, the final wiring is as you'd expect. Knobs connected to 3 volts, connect all the grounds together, then output jack to A0 analog input, wave shape knob to A2 analog input, and frequency knob to A3 analog input. With that done, I do a nice paint job on the module box and take a second to relax. Then I crunch all the wires down to fit inside the box. Soon enough I'll get some proto boards to make this all a bit cleaner, but for now this technically works. And after about 10 minutes of trying to cram all the wires in, I'm eventually successful and close up the box. And I like it, it looks nice. Let's take it for a spin. Okay, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed following along with the process. Next up is a low-frequency oscillator. I'll see you then.